Hey, Tim here. Welcome to Budget Bronco. For today's project, we are going to be using perhaps the most terrifying piece of equipment known to man, and that is the sewing machine. <coughs> yes, that's right. I'm going to be tackling a project using a sewing machine. I literally have not sewed or used a sewing machine since I think home at class in high school, maybe even middle school. So this is gonna be a real challenge. We're gonna be using a sewing machine to hand create a replacement shift boot for the manual transmission. Uh, if you've seen them from the factory, the shift boot is just really ugly. It's made out of just like a really cheap vinyl. Um, looks pretty horrible. You'll see it in the video here. Um, so I'm going to make my own out of leather and I'm going to use custom white stitching to match the accents of my Bronco. So let's go. Here is the process for disassembling the shift knob and the shift boot. You're gonna to wanna to use plastic uh, pry tools for this first step. I would not use a screwdriver if you can avoid it. Uh, I think you could pretty easily mess up your uh, this cap here. Um, but you should be able to just pretty easily get a little uh, pry tool in there and then just work yourself around once you get it up. Should be pretty easy from there. Pry around, and the cap comes off. Not too difficult. Uh, after that, you're going to use an M3 uh, metric uh, hex wrench. This bolt, pretty tough. Uh, first time I took it off when I was testing this process. Uh, so you do have to give it a good, pretty good uh, oomph. That bolt though just comes out pretty easily and then the knob just comes right off. I will note uh, the knob can only go in one way. You can see here this uh, the shift has a flat side so this knob can only go in uh, with the flat side meshing. Um, once you have that off this spring comes off. The spring has some grease on it so I'm going to set that on my floor mat over there. Uh, now is the interesting part. So the shift boot uh, interestingly is assembled to the ring that you pull up on to go into reverse and crawler. Uh, so we're gonna have to figure that out. Um, it's all kind of one assembly. Um, but for starters, you gotta get the shift boot out and we'll deal with that later. So that, uh, I'm just gonna use this pry tool again. If you feel around the edge, you can feel there's some clips. There's one, it feels like on this side, one towards the rear, one on the left and I think two up in the front. So I'm just gonna kind of attack at those points by putting my pry tool down in there. And here like a click and a click there and a click there. And then now it's coming up, you can see, hopefully, yeah, see how it's coming up. Try this side again. There we go. Yeah, so we're good. And one side on the front is already up. And there's the side on the other other side on the front. And now this should just, I'm assuming, slide right off. There you go. So like I say, the shift boot um, has this kind of tube that runs down the middle. And that's what engages or disengages to allow you to shift into crawler and reverse. Um, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five clips that hold with a plastic trim piece. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to make a new boot that assembles onto this plastic trim. Uh, well, let's get to it. Okay, now that I have the boot disassembled, this is the plastic piece that engages or disengages and allows uh, when you pull up and down uh, reverse crawl. Uh, and I can see that there's a tab on each side of this plastic piece that is engaged in the metal tube, uh, which is the part that you pull up and down on. And um, it looks like you have to pull those two tabs apart to get it now. For this, I think a screwdriver is in fact gonna be better. I'm gonna try and wedge it down in underneath that tab carefully without breaking it. So 
I got uh, one side in. Yeah, you can see how that tab is lifted up. And now I'm gonna do the same on the other side with another screwdriver. And now I should be able to pull that plastic piece off. Sure enough, there you go. So now we've got the tube and it looks like at this point, yeah, there's nothing holding. Now that I got that plastic piece off, there's nothing holding the boot. So we're left with just the boot material fully disassembled. Now with this boot disassembled from the vehicle, I need to now get the vinyl off of this plastic mounting, uh, called a mounting ring. It's held on there two ways. One, these little flaps that go around the clips. Uh, one, two, three, four of those. And then also, unfortunately, it looks like the vinyl is kind of heat fused into the plastic. There's like a little dimple there. And uh, there's no way to get that off other than cutting it. So I'm going to use a sharp X-Acto knife and just kind of slide it between the vinyl and the plastic and kind of very carefully, I don't have to worry too much. You know, I'm not reusing this vinyl, but I want to keep it as much intact as possible. Uh, just kind of go on that direction and come back from the other direction. And that just about does it. There. So now that's off the plastic. I'll do one more here. Pretty easy just to kind of slide it along. Could do a little bit from both sides. There. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Two on each side. Uh, so I'll just take all those off and then slide these over the clips, and uh, then I'll be able to disassemble the two pieces of leather. Vinyl, that is. Now I have all of those fused bits cut. I can uh, just slip all of those loops off the clips, and now the uh, plastic piece is completely free. So then the next step is I need to uh, cut the seam of these two pieces. The whole thing is made from two uh, pieces of vinyl, which of course I'm going to do leather, uh, but I need to cut those apart so that I can trace the pattern. So this is going to be a pretty tedious process of just very kind of slowly and carefully going through and um, cutting all of the stitching, stitch by stitch by stitch here uh, on the two pieces. I'm going to be, you know, pretty careful I don't want to ruin it and mess up for the pattern. Um, I'm not going to film this. It's going to take me a while here to go through this entire boot and just kind of real carefully stitch by stitch, cut all that stitching out. And then uh, the stitch that also folds back this piece of vinyl here. Uh, so cut all the way around, cut this uh, seam here. And then uh, next step, I'll show you, I'll have two completely separated pieces from which I can make a, a pattern. These are the two panels and the piece of leather. So what I've done for uh, cutting these pieces out is using some chalk and I've uh, just gone around with chalk and outlined each panel so that we can cut them in the leather. Now, th this is the edge where when I cut it, I'll probably go a little bit wider than that line because this is the part that gets folded back and um, going a little bit wider there is going to give me more than just a teeny tiny little bit to um, sew that finish stitch which is what's going to make it look cool. So I think I'll go a little bit wider here and that'll just give me more to fold back. And so I went ahead and cut these out. Um, I think it makes sense to label these two. This is the one that goes on the left-hand side of the boot. This is the one that goes on the right-hand side of the boot. So I labeled things with a left and an R. And then similarly, um, got these cut out to match the patterns. So 
Now I think that is everything we need and we can get to the sewing part. Now we're ready to start sewing. So we've got the two pieces of leather that have been cut out, put it leather side to leather side, touching each other, um, get everything all lined up and then a couple staples just to kind of hold it together. Um, and then we're gonna sew right along this line. So here we go. Okay, now the tricky part. Now I've got that uh, the two pieces sewn together. Now it's time to add the white accent. You can probably see the white thread. Um, so I've got it opened up and we'll do one stitch down each side to get the uh, nice white effect. And this is going to be a little tricky. And then I basically repeated the white line on both sides. So that's going to be what it looks like when it's sitting on the shift boot. This is not perfect, obviously. I'm going to give you a zoom. I'm not uh, ashamed of my less than perfect sewing skills. A couple little gaps there, maybe here. It comes out a little bit more, but pretty good for home sewing. Not perfect, but pretty good. My initial plan on the second side was to hand sew it, but I think the hole is big enough. Oh, we're about to find out. Big enough that we can actually I sewed it on the machine and hopefully just flip it inside out. Yeah, that looks like it's going to work. Yep, there we go. So that is uh, one side. And that is the other side. So all the sewing is complete. And then it's just a matter of putting it all back together now. Okay, now it's time to reassemble everything together. This is the plastic frame that attaches to the Bronco. Keep in mind this clip uh, is closest to the driver. So I've already gone ahead and kind of um, pulled it down over that plastic frame. Those loops go overneath, over top of these clips. Um, there isn't one in the back, so this just kind of is a little bit looser. But you really gotta stretch this down, bring it down. Uh, those one, two, three, four loops over the clips. Um, and then the last step is, this is the, the goes down underneath the shift. We're gonna put this up and under top of this boot goes down into that plastic piece that I just threaded up. Kind of make sure I have this oriented the right way. The rectangular side that faces towards the left. So I got that right. Got that set up right. And I've got the slot towards the left side. I just heard it snap. Yeah, so now it's on there tight. And we're good, ready to assemble back into the Bronco. Okay, 
Okay, now we'll assemble everything into the Bronco. Uh, this comes down over the top. And then we just have to make sure that before we snap this into place all around, that the lever, leather is fitting in between. It's like here, it's not down in that crack. We gotta get everything down in that crack. So we snap it into place. Gonna use a plastic trim tool just to help make sure it's down in that crack all the way around. Okay, good. Those clips are in. And then this last bit of assembly is really easy. Just reverse from when we took it apart. Uh, this spring goes on first. Then the knob. It can only go in one way, so just make sure it's oriented correctly and push down in there. That's held in place with one screw that we took off. Fasten it with the Allen wrench. Doesn't have to be too tight. And then last, the uh, indicator. Just clips right back in there. And complete. All right, that was a fun project, pretty difficult. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, just a huge improvement over the uh, stock shift boot. I want to give a special shout out and thank you to my mom. Uh, she helped me with guidance on the sewing. I could not have done it without you. Thanks, Bob. I love you. And um, if you like my videos, I appreciate a like and a subscribe. And thanks for watching.